Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I don't know what Alec has actually covered. I saw so the end part of it, so there might be a little what I'm going to say here. But what I've just prepared to say is to give an overview of what we are going to be doing or what is the intention of accelerated breeding initiative. tools and of course the centralization of it that was a new Alec was going to cover it but there is a connection there next slide it is one of the six initiatives that are innovations uh, science group uh, basically myself I'm looking at it as a continuation of the work that we've been doing with in that all the initiatives that we are dealing with connected the crops to end hunger funders, which include development of pipeline investment cases, incentivizing staff to deliver higher genetic gain, and of course, to deliver a strategic plan for varietal turnover so that we move product first. And of course, the implementation of uh, quantitative genetics uh, to manage breeding pipelines what we generally call optimization of pipeline, condition of shared services. We've already talked about sharing here. It goes beyond just IITA itself, but it's also with partners like the national programs and other CGs. So it's quite greater. And the capacity building networks. Are. So there is all those connections. And prior to this, we have had breeding program assessment tools done in 2018 and repeated again in time they evaluated our breeding programs uh, around 10 or so 11 areas and made recommendations so just at the higher level what do you want to achieve by accelerating breeding the idea is to say we need to deliver the preferred products to the farmers and the users and other actors in the value chain of at least 1.5 uh, genetic gain per annum by 2030. That's the big goal. And also to increase the turnover of varieties on the farmer's field, in the farmer's fields, by reducing the area weighted average age of varieties in farmer's fields to less than 15 years by 2030. Initially, we're talking about 20, by 10, 10 to 10 years, but there's a lot of debate looking at where we are coming from different crops. But ideal a variety should be in the farmer's food for not more than five years. Ideal. That's where we are going in the long term. So, in order to achieve this accelerated breeding, is with five, uh, what I say, strategy ways. We need to refocus the products. We have to reorganize the system of delivering these products or product development. We have to transform the partnerships with the NAS and small to medium enterprise private sector. We have to discover new trades and of course accelerate the breeding. So this is basically in five ways. In doing so, there are other initiatives that we collaborate with. It will not work alone. Gene banks is part of the collaborating initiatives with market intelligence and product profiles, MIP, and then network for enabling tools, and technologies, shared services, I'm sure I'm getting it right. And then the precision genetic tools, things like gene editing being done by another initiative. Then seed quality, me moving the product from the breeders into the late stage of development, going towards commercial the breeding initiatives is connected to all these other initiatives. So we are not going to be working in isolation. Next. Okay, all right, that's fine. This is just the broad outcomes in the long term, what you really want to achieve. These initiatives are for 2022 to 2024. That's a three year project. In principle, breeding pipelines, we want them to be oriented towards specific market segments. So every breeding program or pipeline must be addressing a certain market, which is clearly defined. It won't be a random event. Pipelines are revised organizational framework that provide operational see that operational clarity and effectiveness. 
so the importance of enabling tools supporting that. Breeding networks will be implementing stronger partnerships between the CGs, the NAS, and the SMEs, the transform element. This improves the way we network. Breeding pipelines are supported by a data discovery and trade deployment program. This refers to the activities that will help identify some other trades that are required based on the product profile. Current breeding from current products that we have in the market. This may involve molecular breeding, molecular tools being used, or native traits that are already there could be crossed into materials. Breeding pipelines have increased the genetic gain. I've mentioned this is one of the design 24. All our programs at IITA must have the capacity to deliver genetic gain of at least 1.5% per annum. That's where we are moving. Breeding pipelines will provide candid varieties with a step change in performance under farmer's conditions to seed the system comes in. But we develop varieties with, we'll take it ultimately to the release system with other partners like NAS and the small scale enterprises in the region. So these are basically the broad six or so outcomes that we need to achieve by 2024, and I'll go and describe the, the initiatives. So basically I've touched on a number of initiatives that the initiatives can group into four broad groups. You'll find that within the plant breeding group, the accelerated breeding, the one I'm talking about, we have the enabling tools, they are quite close in the accelerated improvement through precision genetic tools like gene editing that I've mentioned about, they are quite closely needed. Gene banks are there, which will conserve the use of genetic resources. Market intelligence which is very important for more equitable impactful genetic innovations and then we have the city activities. But the impact areas are the same as SDGs. Uh, is for 2030 to deliver on nutrition, reduction of poverty, increasing on jobs, of course, equality and social inclusion climate adaptation and environment uh, health and biodiversity. Those are the impact areas that most of these initiatives are touching on. The next slide, yeah. In the next slide, it's just an illustration of the connectivity uh, of these initiatives. The one at the beginning, MIP, it's Market Intelligent Product Profile Initiative. Market Intelligence uh, will provide effective approaches and capabilities that to generate product profiles with the greatest uptake and benefit. So that deliverable will feed into accelerated breeding initiatives so that the breeders will be able most effectively in the sense that they develop are required by the market, required by the farmers within the value chain. So they are in four intelligence teams. But in doing their work, the breeders will be supported, enabling tools, techniques, and services. But what we are saying that products, they need high quality data that informs their decisions. The data-driven decision-making system. So the important in operational excellence will help to improve the quality of the data that is delivered to the breeders so that they make uh, the best decisions in identifying the best varieties that to be advanced within the stage gate systems and ultimately transferred to the seed system, which is the seed power. The seed power is the seed systems initiative, is the one responsible for upscaling these varieties uh, towards the release. And they'll give feedback, which comes back uh, to the ABI as a continuous process. And this is a shift from 2022 to 2024, and ultimately we need to achieve the goal of delivering the high rates of genetic gain by 2030. And in doing so, improvements in the infrastructure and the networks to take varieties from the breeders through seed systems and ultimately to the farmer. This 1.5 genetic gain must also be realized in the farmer's station level. That's where the challenge is. How can we get those high levels gains in the farmer's fields? 
So I'm just looking at what delivery marketing intelligence that are crucial for third breeding segments, where we we'll focus the breeding pipe will be provided to the breeders by market intelligence. Uh, also the product profiles that are aligned to each of those market segments. And then the pipeline investment cases that will be developed. So these are examples of the deliverables coming from one initiative. is interdependent. It will also affect the next initiative. Who saw that from the beginning we work together as a team even though we belong to different initiatives, but we collaborate through and through to make sure that we close all the gaps. The next slide. This is just an illustration of the partners and initiatives that inform product profile. Market intelligence benefits will bring in some relevance of the product profile. They will give information about the demand for the products, the NAS also bring information about demands and the relevance of. And then the SME, the seed systems initiative, which is CD Power, will also generate information about demand. Breeders play a role through quantitative genetics, developing such a product. You may come up with a very good profile that address the farmer's requirements or consumer the available resources, is it feasible to do this? What kind of support we require to develop such a product? We'll be informed, contribute to investment, but they also want to see what are they paying for. Some funders are interested in different market segments. They may not like other markets in terms of funding and the impact that it has on unemployment, more nutrition, food security in general, are all the factors that will impact on funding. So this is just the five strategic ways they are talking about under accelerated breeding that we want to refocus. Next slide, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fine that we are there. So refocus the product that talk, that information will come from market intelligence and then refocus the organization. This is the way the work will be done, is standardized, starting from discovering new those traits, population improvement and the variety of validation. A clear stage gate process is supposed to be developed. Here, responsibilities, who is responsible for what, who is accountable for what, who should be consulted, who should be informed using the RASIC model. Deliverable implemented so that we work through a standardized approach across all the crops at IITA and across all other CG centers and partners. We need to get to a standard way to introduction and community. Coming now in the same is a food about the idea there is to make sure within the breeding from the CGs, NAS, the SMEs are effectively in their role within the stage. It might in, include increasing the, the NAS to enable them to deliver on their responsibilities in the process. Trade discovery, I've talked about it, is the advantage to be included in the in five is basically the improvements to the bridge throughout the network is developed is developed by breeding services which is the enabling tools will be supporting that process right now we have got a parallel workshop going on as we are talking so basically the deliverables of the Breeding, accelerated breeding of the region based market segments that we are going to work on for impact. We are not going to breed for all market segments. There's going to be a prioritization. It's okay, there are 600 market segments, but there is IATA where should we play and have maximum impact. With partners, we should be able to identify that. Even the funders will say, okay, out of all these, 
80% of the requirements for food security are in only maybe 20 market segments, then that's where investments would go. Of course, if there will be a stronger breeding through the transformation process, if we spell out clear roles and responsibilities, and then we empower all partners to play their roles within that network, definitely the impact will be so good. And then optimization of breeding programs, the resource allocations will be aligned with quantitative genetics. Read about the breeders equation that is implemented to manage breeding programs in terms of guiding the selection process, the amount of genetic variation that reducing the cycles, the breeding cycles, so all addresses in that equation. I've already talked about the need to exploit diversity that is there to get some new traits uh, that are required. And then breeding teams and scientists incentivized to deliver higher genetic gain. I want to underline the wage teams. That's another element in the cultural change that we are trying to bring at IITA and other organizations to try and reduce the major hierarchy when people are playing as teams. We want to flatten the, the structure to enable people to exchange information, to encourage creativity coming from the bottom, not necessarily coming from is still important, but we'll try to make sure that take decisions quicker, faster, we'll be more agile that way. So that's another element we are looking at. And then changing the way CGR breeding trials are run to more representative of farmers' conditions. So the trialing network, the testing network improved. We we'll analyze them, get the best impact and the return for a dollar. Most importantly, applicants have optimized uh, situation, appropriate technologies and techniques. Those are the major deliverables that are going to do. So basically, ABI is there to improve the way we are doing our breeding, to move faster, and to deliver the product that matches the requirements of our customers. Uh, this is just to show the kind of things that we expect from the enabling tools to enable breeding to move fast. Logistics and forecasting tools, can also get support through gen genotyping. Those are some of the elements that are there. We discussed about quality management systems. See also something that will be developed by the enabling tools that will be used also by breeders to manage the trial and testing networks. For example, improve the use of data, uh, support one CG NAS digitization tools and support systems. Already, digitization equipment has been distributed by AIB and more will be coming. But like we are saying, this will be centralized coming through the central operations unit. And of course, managing the projects better, that capacity can be developed through the enabling tools. So it is quite crucial that enabling tools and accelerated breeding work together. This is just an example of some of the activities that will be undertaken by the city systems colleagues that are important to to accelerated breeding, seed production research protocols and multiplication technologies. When we come up with new varieties, at times we release a variety, it might fail to take off because farmers can't multiply the variety or it takes long. Even if the cuttings is different, even for yam or cassava, the number of plants that you can get, multiplication rate is never the same. So that kind of research will be conducted by the seed systems group and of course, they would require support from the breeders uh, to do that. The stage gets product advancement process, the late stage. The first stages of moving from crosses to early testing, that is managed by breeders. But as you go towards in the SMEs, they'll be working more with the seed systems team. And of course, monitoring the products that are out there their impact and bring back that information to breeders in some of the examples. So there are so many other activities there. Just try to pick the one that are closest to accelerated breeding. This might be my last slide. Is there another one? Thank you. So this is just an illustration that all the six initiatives, they interact with the summer slide. I've said most of the things here, but I've just highlighted the enable that 
enabling tools for genetic gains, support the organization implementation of all genetic innovation research and organizing and delivering data analysis and data management and coordinating uh, discovery research hub. This might also include the delivery of gemplas in the seed shipment to partners will be centralized and also the trialing network will be managed through the enabling tools colleagues. So thank you so much for what I thought again. John for uh... So do we have any questions or discussion items that we would like to share with John regarding the uh, accelerated breathing initiative? One point two five percent genetic gain is great a year. However, from experience, the National Varietal Release Committee of this country called Nigeria, that I know, has issues. Uh, Peter, you know what I'm talking about. Whatever is within our own circuit, we can control, we can rejig, we can improve on. But when it has to do with the national agricultural research systems, I think we need to look at it again. There seems to be a problem in that area and it's a challenge really, but if we start early and um, we get them involved, unfortunately, as you get this group involved, they get old, they are retired. Another meeting is like you are starting, you do another meeting and then you find out that um, after one year or two, they are out. And this group of people don't have session plan as to involve younger people that can be part of the system. So we really have to look at that one carefully again. Just my thought. Thank, thank, thank you so much. I think it's a, a very valid point. Lenin might comment on this. One of the deliverables for ABI, when I talked about transformation of the breeding networks, sitting down with all collaborators, including national research programs, discussing these roles and responsibilities, and documenting them. The agreements is one of the targets that is there. So I issues of succession will be addressed as well in the process. But it's important that you're highlighting it because people come and go like they do in the private sector. But the information remains with the institution because private sector is standard operation procedures and agreements that are in there. So it's an area of in the network of CGs, NAS, and SMEs. How do we make sure that there'll be succession? So one of the beginning things is to get agreements on these roles being signed so that the institution will have an agreement to say this is the way we're going to be doing things we have agreed to do it this way when people change if the agreement is in place they are likely to follow what is there but it's more than that <laughs> it's just to be part of the capacity building feeding into it thank you thank you <laughs> i think it's a long-term process but uh, we're still young so maybe we can <laughs> yeah still do some changes no <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, okay. I think in young breeding uh, units, between 2019 and today, we have about five young varieties that have been released. Of course, they went through the process of the national system and all of that. But one of the initiatives that uh, the young breeding is doing is uh, something called a uh, uh, demand creation system in such a way that you make the farmers themselves aware of those input varieties. They want it. They have challenges. They want something better than what they are cultivating. National system be a kind of blocking to them accessing it. But from the research institute, there is an 
initiative that is helping them to have uh, access into this. The national system will be aware that, of course, there are new young varieties in the market. It has passed through their tables. They are aware of it, but they might not actually be the one that will take uh, them to farmers. So this is what we are doing in, in young breeding and uh, maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, thanks, Teresa. Uh, Gustavo, you wanted to comment. You had your hand raised. I have a question to John. Can you hear me well, uh, Amir? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Gustavo. Okay, so uh, my question to John. Uh, so here or in this workshop, we are targeting the, um, uh, how the, the operational um, team could support the, the breeding uh, targets or the breeding goals. And uh, if you will see the ABI and N4X, I think the, the, the biggest, um, I wouldn't say challenge, but the biggest uh, or probably opportunity and, 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 and how to, how to define the boundaries exactly what is in, in the scope of ABI and what is in the scope of n 4 x is when goes to the to the to the not not only theory but how to execute the work and and and, and things for instance should just brainstorming here and this can be also one one discussion on the the session uh, uh, Amir just as an example should phenotype be with breeders or with be on the operation or should maybe uh, pathology support be be with breeders or with the decentralization anyway so this type of uh, areas that could be uh, could have uh, different uh, interpretations and um, I don't know how you see that uh, John and how to to in a regional perspective and once as Yongwa uh, well said in in n 4 x in the work package files there's the component of the the capacity building or the, the so and, and define exactly what needs to be done in each region is important so how do you see that uh john and how this group that is in the workshop here can help to, to answer this question during the the workshop Yeah, I, I hope I put the question clearly. Eh? We are looking at how the different disciplines to understand centralization. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's something that is new uh, to all scientists. The kind of questions we are getting in the engagement that we're having with them about centralization, we still have to do more in order to inform them about the benefits of decentralization but the biggest impediment is in areas which require funding and these guys will say yeah this funding is provided we are willing to do that so i hope i got your question right um gustavo uh, was that your point that you were asking yeah it helped but uh, my question john was more on on really next steps because how to really define the work plan and how to to execute this you understand my my point is okay we know that this is a challenge but okay how can we have an operational team here in this workshop in west africa region the priority stations the priority centers or the priority crops how can we take the next step what needs to be done with within this? Well, how this group can help instead of uh, thinking on what on the the, the long term plan? What can this group achieve in in a short term? And what? Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, I think that is in a building process. But what I'm saying is, there's also an opportunity to share and and discuss this. This have tangible actions with this during this week. Okay. Okay, thanks, Gustavo. I think, yeah, what the, the target is here is how can we, between 
breeders and operational uh, teams, okay, collaborate to make this uh, initiative successful or to help it succeed, okay, on the long run. So how can we all help out, okay, or what is the plan for us to collaborate or how to integrate this within our uh, right current jobs or current uh, work process for us to be able to make this actual succeed? I, I'm getting it now. So what I, what I think is during this time you are here, it would be nice to engage with the breeders and they help to explain to them how this, you think this will be done and how it has been done in other institutions. We found that when we including there in one of our discussions uh, about centralization, the breeder will say, do you say I won't be able to see my nursery, I'll just wait for data to come. We had a technician from there saying, no, we manage all the nurseries, but breeders come, still come to the nurseries and take their notes. So I think once you are here, if you need to organize one-on-one -on -one meetings, they hear from you is different from when they hear it from Ali and myself. So I think that's part of the, the process, helping their condition, their mindsets. It's like telling a mother to leave the, a baby and travel to England with another woman who's a stranger. But if she's assured that this woman coming here is a former nurse, but looked after so many kids. <laughs> it's a bit different in terms of acceptance. Yeah, so I think that's where you can help me and Alec once you are here. You can organize those one-on-one -on -one meetings. We're organizing some for product profile uh, development with Agnes. We'll take one-on-one -on -one meetings. So I think Vinicius and yourself can also meet with some of our breeders. Alec can help you line up the breeders that you think can help. And some of people like Peter here with the experience of managing international trials in cassava. <laughs> but his job will still be there under centralization. So it's a number of the things that people want to be assured of. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, John.